to the table. Okay. Are you ready? So. <clears throat> Great. No. I was, I'm very happy to introduce uh, Stefano Garletta from Sapienza University in Rome, who will uh, speak on uh, long term capture orbits for low energy space missions. Thank you. Excuse me, are you replacing Paolo Dutilasso? Yes. Uh, yes. Because on the document is marked uh, for no, Yeah, but uh, I was told it was uh, a replacement. Uh -huh. <coughs> yes, I'm taking the presentation. I think The professor agreed. Okay. So, good morning, everybody, and thank you for the introduction. Uh, so the work I am presenting here today uh, was developed in the framework of the three-dimensional circular restricted three-body problem, and I am going to refer to it from now on as the, simply as the three-body problem. And it is aimed at verifying the existence of natural capture orbits about the smaller primary, and we are looking for this orbit uh, uh, departing from trajectories that are asymptotic to liberation quasi-periodic orbits. So one question could be why starting why looking for capture orbits from <coughs> asymptotic to quasi periodic? This is because the results of some previous work by Professor Theophilat and Professor Fontaine show that these orbits are of high interest <coughs> and maybe some good hints in the finding of capture trajectories. We will go on detail on this and then we will extend the results. Oh, those results were developed in the Quanar three body problem, so it was a two D problem. And we are now extending these results in the 3D with some little differences. And we will see the results in both the physical plane, rotating with primaries, and in a new Hamiltonian frame. So, uh, to be more clear about the reference frames, we have three representations in this presentation that are the classical physical one, <coughs> that is four state variables, and in the 2D, six in the 3D, and they can be reduced by one if passing through cylindrical coordinates. In the Hamiltonian representation, we don't have less variables, so there's no advantage in this sense, but apparently it is possible to represent the capture condition by just referring to uh, x1 and y1 in both the 2D and 3D problem. This is a sketch of the three representations. We have the physical one, classical one, we can see the, this is in 2D, so we can see the uh, streets representing the, the border of the two manifolds, stable and unstable, converging to the periodic orbit that is in blue. And as we know, uh, to define asymptotic to periodic quasi-periodic orbits, we have to set two conditions, one on the position, so the point must be inside <coughs> in case, the blue cylinder, and a condition on the velocity, in particular its angle. So if the angle is included within the wedge angle, which you can see in this uh, circle here, we can have transit. Asymptotic two are going to be at the limits of the wedge angle, and so we have to see together two plots, two sketches, to understand if the condition is transit or not. This gets much more simple in the cylindrical coordinates because, as we will see in a while, running inside these tubes that are represented uh, is the same as having the transit condition. I will show you how. And in the Hamiltonian plane, as you can see, there's again the problem of the double representation, the circle for the uh, periodic uh, variables, and the plane that If we prove that, it can be used for uh, analyzing the capture condition. So, um, so we start from the cylindrical representation used in the planar model, and we uh, work on it by using Birkhoff's equation, reducing from four to three the state variables, and making some transformation to cylindrical coordinates. So x, y, and z can now be represented in a 3D space. That's the maximum that we can represent. And the manifold that are here uh, can be seen here as tubes. So again, running inside the tube defines the condition for transit. And the tube itself is a paratrix for asymptotic uh, orbits. Now we can see that two tubes representing two manifolds, they intersect either multiple times. And at the intersection, this is an interesting region because something interesting happens <coughs> that is Uh, the common region here is uh, temporary capture orbits. It represents the region of temporary capture orbits. And we can see a sketch here where there's a section of uh, this intersection and uh, the color points they represent 
the initial space considered and propagated, propagating the planar problem, and we have a color bar representing different times, different capture times. Uh, this is in accord with column steering that is uh, at the boundary of this region, so where crossing asymptotic orbit exists, near any such there is a capture orbit. Now, this theorem holds in the 2D, it was developed in a 2D, in the planar case of the three body problem. We want to see if some extension to the 3D problem it can exist. And this is in particular a planar uh, long term capture orbit for 8.5 years for the uh, Earth Moon system. So, um, we have to develop the 3D model. We start from energy. We know that the region, the so called equilibrium region, by Conley, is defined by this uh, hyperboloid, this equation, and it just represents uh, the linearized version of the net of the zero velocity surfaces. Uh, in particular, we are focused on, it works for any collinear liberation point, but we are focusing on L1. And again, since we are, first we develop this problem in the physical uh, representation, we have two conditions to set, one in position, x, y, and z, so we move from, do you remember the planar case it was you have to be inside the street, it becomes you have to be inside the cylinder. And in particular, the asymptotic two cylinder is the blue one. Uh, this is a sketch of an initial state. Plus, we have a condition on the velocity that is represented in the 3D by two angles. So it can be sketched by a sphere of the uh, cosine directors. And this is the region of the velocity inside these regions, so from the center to a point inside this region, there's transit. The limit region, so the blue circle, is asymptotic uh, uh, two. And again, we have the problem of the double representation at the same time. If we look at the linearized dynamic, 3D dynamics, we can see that the orbits that we are uh, interested in are the asymptotic two and are those whose alpha one parameter, it is one of the coefficients multiplying the uh, <coughs> aperiodic uh, plus t term. It must be set to zero. So what we do is, defining this region, region of points with alpha one equal to zero, we also investigate what happens inside this region where we should have transit. And we see if there's any change in the behavior in, term of, in terms of uh, long-term capture. Uh, how did we select the points? So we define that value of x is zero, so the initial states were selected with a fixed value of x. That is um, just one delta, so a little step beyond where the two cylinders, they intersect. So there's no intersection considered here. We are over the intersection. Plus we are in the alpha plane that contains the smaller primary, of course. Given a section of the cylinder like that, so an x section, uh, we have an ellipse like that with z and y directions and uh, we define a discretization of z going from zero to the value, maximum value and in the linear problem it just depends on the energy and the masses of the problem involved, so the mean. And then we divided the interval of y into an equal number of points, equidistant points. This is what uh, for the sun Mars system around L1 what the velocity regions look like. So it's a spherical cup, of course, and we can see red points that are 30 years captured orbits and paler points, blue or green, that are short-term capture orbits. They are roughly uh, less than 200 days. So uh, the whole pro the initial states were propagated in the non-linear, uh, with the non-linear integrations and they were integrated for 30 years, so there is a huge difference between the inner part, greenish, and outer part, red. Uh, these are two special cases, but of course, this representation depends, so the velocity depends on the position, as I said before. So let's see what happens by changing the position. As, I, um, as you can see here, uh, in this ellipse, we can, we can separate the left region from the right region, that is, uh, so Z is the sy symmetry plane of the cylinder. So we start from the left and see what happens and if there's any difference. Uh, going from the outer bound to the inner side of the cylinder, we can see that for any given value of Z ranging from zero to the maximum value, 
and for any almost <coughs> plus majority of uh, cosine directors of the velocity theta and phi, it is almost every time captured. So what happens going inside? We can see that the red points start migrating from the center uh, to the perimeter, and in the end, when we are close to the center, the captures they occur in the other region. For, so for the limit values of theta and phi. Let's see what happens on the other side. This is another representation from the right side of the ellipse. This is just the opposite. We have um, capture just for zeta equal zeta max, and there's some little like intention of capture on the in this border of the velocity region theta phi. But if we move again from the uh, generic from the outer surface to the center of the cylinder, we can see that this capture region extends up to the perimeter of the <coughs> velocity region. So if we look at the center, in the end, we can see that captures at the center of the cylinder for any given value of z excluding zeta equal zeta max, uh, they are concentrated, they are more probable in the outer region. So for the limiting values of theta and p. This is a representation in space, and we want to introduce this parameter here, that is alpha 1 over alpha 2, remembering that alpha 1 and 2 were the two coefficients uh, multiplying the aperiodic terms in the linearized model. It is possible to see that for uh, values of y that are belonging to the uh, minor half plane, so the left half plane of the cylinder, and for values of alpha 1 over alpha 2 closing to 0, the capture conditions are almost focused in that region. For any value of z, again, excluding zeta equal to zeta max. This is another representation um, on, uh, that, are, that includes the values of theta and phi, and this is useful for seeing that, again, alpha 1 over alpha 2, it gives us some good hints in finding capture orbits because most of the red points are concentrated in the plane of alpha 1 over alpha 2 equal to 0. Finally, we go to the Hamiltonian representation. So we linearize the classical Hamiltonian. Uh, we also make some transformation for having a canonical symplectic and real uh, final Hamiltonian function. And we can see that in the Hamiltonian plane, in, in particular in the x1, y1 Hamiltonian plane, uh, the trajectories, linear trajectories, they are represented as a hyperbola. It is possible for this hyperbola, given an initial point, let's say here, to determine the time for this point to migrate moving on one of the, from the hyperbola it belongs to, to its symmetric with respect to the bisector. And this time is referred here. This holds for the linear, but we want to see how these things evolve in the nonlinear. So, using the results from nonlinear integrations and representing them in the Hamiltonian plane, that's what we obtain. Uh, here, I'm showing you the results from the left half plane of the cylinder, so uh, close to the axis, to the x axis. Uh, you have the reference to the physical plane here. This is the uh, high distance view, and this is a little zoom in. So, we can see that the captures are at the beginning almost uh, everywhere in the region in the x1, y1 plane and then going on, so moving to the center of the cylinder, they collapse close to the axis. There is another interesting thing that there is this little branch of red points that is by chance coincident to those points whose value of alpha 1 over alpha 2 is it's not equal to zero, but it's the smaller value, the smallest value except zero, of course. So again, it seems like that's a good indicator for capture. So what we can see here is that using the Hamiltonian representation to simplify looking for capture solutions, capture initial states, uh, we're just looking for them on the x-axis, x1 axis. If we now match the, um, the, <coughs> state, the capture time, there's not real capture in the linear model, but the time to migrate the uh, smaller primary with the capture times inferred from the nonlinear integration, we can see that there's good matching between the two equations. And again, this plot includes T star, the color bar represents the time from the nonlinear model, 
and we have in the x-axis the ratio alpha 1 over alpha 2. So it means that apparently alpha 1 over alpha 2 is a good indicator again. So um, to conclude, we have seen that we, we have looked for capture orbits, natural capture orbits, starting from asymptotic from trajectories that are asymptotic to quasi-periodic liberation, quasi-periodic mm -hmm. orbits. And we have extended, we have made numerical simulations in the 3D using the circular restricted free body problem. The numerical analysis showed a good agreement with what was disco discovered, what was verified in the planar case. So 2D and 3D have some points in common, which was not trivial, but this is a numerical evidence. Plus, we can see that using the Hamiltonian representation, probably both the representation and the research for capture orbits, it might be simplified. So future works aim mainly in uh, going into, go farther into this point, using the Hamiltonian coordinates and investigating more of them if they are really that useful. And plus, clarify the possible relations between the homotonic orbits and the long-term capture because that could be some more analytical, eventually, or uh, evidence in general, even numerical, that there is a connection between the two, just like it is in the Spanner case. So we could see if the 3D case can be seen as an extension of some kind of the planar case. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is time for one very, very short question. No question? But uh, uh, thank you again. Thank you.